Well, good morning and welcome to Central on this long weekend. It is finally sunny outside. Yes, look at it. It was very it's foggy beautiful. earlier today. People are still coming in. We're so thankful that you're watching, whether you're watching online or whether you're here in person. My name is Mario, and I'm here with Pastor Janet. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just love yep. a long weekend, don't you? I do. Yeah. I do. I know last night in Niagara Falls, we already had some a preview of some of the celebrations, oh, Victoria nice. celebrations, a lot of fireworks Excellent. going on. I'm, I'm sure I'll hear some more tonight. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm going into the garden tomorrow. I think the yeah, sun okay. is going to be amazing. Uh, but anyways, we just want to welcome all of you who are here today, whether you're here, uh, you've been coming for a while or you're here for the first time. We are just so glad that you chose to spend your long weekend with us, right? That's yeah. amazing. Anyways, we would love to meet you if you are new and and help you get connected and you can do that by simply coming out over to the highlight wall and the uh, connections area right behind us here and anyone with a lanyard or a blue shirt would be happy to answer any questions get to know you a little bit and tell you all about ways to get connected online if you're watching please interact with our online host why not even drop in the chat where you're watching from we would love to get to know you a little and uh, also if you are on the move you can text us at 905-937-5 but you know if you are watching online we would love for you to share this experience because really don't we all want to experience the fun things that we're having here and the growth and the connection and so you can just do that on whatever platform you're watching and if you're here why not take a few pictures and tag us at central cc and let us know all about you all right well yeah. speaking about connections that's our vision here at central to, yes. it's helping helping you to connect to god and to each other and so sundays is just one of the ways that we do that uh, but perhaps you may feel a little bit overwhelmed by so many people if you're here yeah. in person such a large space but what the primary way that we connect with each other is through groups yes we have five different types of groups at central small groups community groups interest groups support groups and also serve groups you know, yes. Pastor Janet and I led a, a, a community group yes, up until a couple of weeks ago. Yep. But Pastor Janet is here today to share about some of the things that are happening for the spring and summer. Yes. So go for it. All right. Well, you know, you cannot miss out on what is happening in spring and summer here around Central because we have tons of places for you to connect. We have groups for pretty much everything like kayaking, walking, hiking. We have a mom's meetup group. They're going to do backyard right now, beach later. We've got... Um, um, kayaking, I don't know what else I've mentioned. There's like golfing, oh my goodness. There's like so many things. So you are not gonna wanna miss out on that. So if you are interested, then come uh, to the connections area. We can help you with that. And you can check out all the things that are going on. Or you can also go to the website at centralcc.ca slash groups. And there is a full list. You can sign up and we will be in touch with you right away about where and when we're meeting and what's happening. And there's everything from weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, a few times a year, and even food. There's like barbecue groups. Right. I, I saw know. Some it's amazing. Yeah. 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 You don't want to miss out. You don't, don't want to miss, miss out. out. Another thing that you don't want to miss out on next week is our worship encounter. Yes. And so that's happening Sunday night right here at 6 p.m. May the 26th. It was an incredible time the last time that so we got good. together for Encounter. Uh, it's an extended time of worship. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have communion that we're going to be celebrating next Sunday night again. And so it's, join us for this hour of worship. Yes. We're wanting you to add it to your calendar and make sure that, you know, you, you come. Children are, you know, are welcome as well. We have kids yeah. programming for those that are five and under. Yep. But we love to see all of the generations worshiping oh, together. Yeah, so, so we're going to be in the auditorium, uh, auditorium A for that. So be a part of that next Sunday night right here at 6 p.m. Excellent. And if you've come today and you would like to worship through your giving, we just want to let you know there are lots of opportunities for you to do that because really everything we're talking about, all of our groups and our connections and everything that's happening is because of your generosity. And we just want to thank you so much for that. Um, and if you've come here today for the first time, feel no obligation at all to, to give. But if you are a regular, you know, attender, you consider Central is really, this is your home um, and you would like to worship that way there's a few ways you can do that you can go to our website at centralcc.ca slash give and you can set up a one-time gift or ongoing giving you can also go to one of the giving kiosks that are at both of the entrances and you can do cash
cash, check, debit, credit, whatever you'd like. And also there's a tip tap station right behind us at exit A. And you can tap um, a credit or a debit card up to 10 times if you'd like. And however you choose to give, we just want to say thank you so much for your generosity and just partnering with us to reach this amazing region, right? Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you for your partnership yeah. and yeah, contributing. We want to let you know that if you have any questions today about anything that you heard, or perhaps you have other questions, you can always visit us here in the lobby in the connections wall. You find people with blue shirts yep. and lanyards. You can visit us at centralcc.ca. There on our website, you can find previous messages. Yeah. You can connect with our staff, stay updated on upcoming events. Uh, if you uh, see, you'll see in front of you, if you're here in person, a QR code in the seat yeah. in front of you. You can connect that way, or you can always text us at 905 937 56 one zero. We're here to help you in any way that we can. Yeah. So that's pretty much a wrap for that's everything great. that uh, we had to say here. Uh, we're looking forward to another message, Pastor yes. Bill, today as he shares from the series Inside Out. And yeah. so we're going to head over into the auditorium as our Sunday experience begins right now. where God's creativity is on display. A place where beauty is revealed across every nation and every generation. Where community is worth fighting for and belonging is our mission. We are a vibrant people because of what God has done in us. It's his love that is changing us and only his love that will change our world. We see a place where trust is forged, where purpose is reclaimed and hope is found. And as the church, we are in the center of what he is doing in our region. We are a place where people are our mission. People sometimes come up to me and they say, Bill, the church should and fill in the blank. And I always think to myself, you're right. You should, because you are the church. We are a place where transformation is our goal. The truth is, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. We are a place where community is our heart. You and I were created with the need to be loved and the capacity to love in return. That's why nobody should ever walk alone. We are a place where Jesus is the way. We believe that even when people fail to love, it doesn't mean that love fails because God's love always wins. This is a place for you.
risen, he is risen, he's alive. He is risen, he is risen, he's alive. Yes, God. Praise you, God. Do you believe that, church? The God of beginnings, the God of endings, he's alive in you today. Let that rise up in you, let faith rise up in you.
God, yes, he is. You are the same God. You touched the lepers then. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. If you need him today, would you just raise your hands? Like a child who needs a parent. Say, God, I need you. I'm calling out to you. God, I need you in my life. And your presence right now means everything to me in my situation. Oh, God. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And how could we be afraid to ask our loving, kind, good, constant God? When the night falls, when 
Thank you for showing me that it doesn't matter what people think of me. What matters is you and what you think. You know my heart, you know my intentions, you know exactly what I'm thinking and I'm gonna continue to not try to find approval from others, but lift your name, hi, Jesus, above everything that I'm going through and everything that I'm doing. Jesus, you are my provider, you are my protector. You know my heart. You are my future. Jesus, you surround me in every step that I take. And thank you for loving me exactly who I am today. And continue to teach me to love myself and others just the way you would. In your name, amen. Thanks for singing, everyone, and worshiping with us. Let me go ahead and grab a seat as we continue our time together.
How are you doing? <laughs> and that's the appropriate response in this context. But normally when people ask you that question, really it is just a social courtesy, right? Right? Uh, they, they don't really want to know how you're doing. They just want to say, hi, I see you, I acknowledge you. Um, so we give the right answer. I'm great, right? Because what we're looking for often in that question is how are you doing on the outside? Like how's work? Uh, how's your vacation? How are the kids? How, how are you doing on the outside? We aren't really, we're not really maybe interested in what's happening inside. But today I wanna ask that question differently. I mean, how are you? Maybe a better way to say it is, how is your heart today? Is it good? Is it not? Why? Why not? Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, above all else, that is a bold statement. Before anything else, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. In this proverb, we are reminded of this series that we are not working outside in, but inside out. In a world that's really superficial, that's all outside driven and oriented, how can I get this what I want outside of me? How can I control my circumstance? How can I gain advantage in the situation? The Bible actually says you've got it backwards. That if your heart isn't right, nothing else will be right. No amount of energy, prestige, money, relationships can fix you on the inside by fixing what's on the outside. Only God can change you from the inside out. And this is great news because we live in a really superficial world that gives you superficial targets. And then you hit those targets and you're still not at peace. You may have momentary lapses <laughs> of relief from struggle, but that storm that rages deep inside of you, the heart issue is still there. And so when I ask you today, how is your heart? I'm talking about right here, the center of everything you think about, the emotions, the will. You see, because this word heart in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word lev. And this word doesn't mean, obviously, the muscle that's pumping blood through your body. We're grateful for that. Keep up the good work. Um, we're also talking about our feelings. You know, people today say, well, I'm just going to go with my feelings. Okay, where are they leading you? And are you sure you should be going that way? Oh, I, I just feel this in my heart. Well, what if your heart is wrong? <laughs> how, how many times have you gone with your heart and you've made it worse? And so what does it mean to really guard your heart and to experience the fullness for which you were created? That's what we're after here today. So like in the movie Inside Out, I believe there's a control center. It's your heart. It's the part that makes the decisions, that navigates your emotions and your feelings, your intentions and your will, and it drives you. And what happens in your heart will actually spill out of you. It will be exposed. Out of the mouth, the heart speaks, Jesus said. Right? He condemned the Pharisees because on the outside they looked great. But he said, you're whitewashed sepulchers, which is tombs. Inside, you're dead. And when you're dead inside, there's no amount of outside stuff that can fill that emptiness and that death. And so today we want to talk about what the world calls emotional quotient, EQ or EI, emotional intelligence or emotional stability. Today we want to explore what would it look like if you could, instead of letting your emotions master you, you could let God master them. What would happen? What would change in your relationships? What would change in your place of work? What would change in your personal circumstances if you could just not worry about what's happening outside of you, but change what was happening inside of you and in a culture of blame and shame, in a culture of victimization, this is a dynamic and powerful way of transforming your circumstance because when you believe this, it doesn't matter what happens outside of you because inside you're okay. You have an anchor in the storm. You have a foundation when the earth is sinking. You have hope. 
And so we're going to learn about emotions. Gotquestions.org, a website that I actually refer to quite often, said it this way. God created human beings with the ability to experience a wide range of emotions. <laughs> you know that. It, it's amazing, isn't it? You can be laughing in one second and the next second you're bawling your face off, right? Have you ever had that experience? Right, or you're mad and then you're laughing. Like, emotions are fickle. Or you've misunderstood something, you had an emotional outburst. Let me just help you with this, okay? If you find that every conversation you have is an argument, how's your heart? If you find that people really don't understand you, it's like you, you can't seem to connect, how's your heart? If people don't trust you or you don't trust people, how's your heart? This is a heart condition. It's a deep problem. And we need to address it. And so the Bible says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. This word heart in the Hebrew, lev, is actually an interesting word because it puts two Hebrew letters together. And I think that's intentional. So on the screen there, you can see these two letters. And in Hebrew, you read from right to left. And so the letter on the right looks like a shepherd's staff. Uh, it's a bit of a pictograph, is the word lamed, which means teacher or instructor, to take instruction. It's the idea of a shepherd's staff, a shepherd who's leading his sheep where they should go. <laughs> and sheep need to be steered. When the Bible calls us sheep, that's not a compliment. But it is a true statement. Sheep left to their own get eaten by wolves. Uh, they fall off cliffs. They go into water and drown. They just, sheep are not that intelligent. And so they need a shepherd to guide them. And the way a shepherd guides them is sometimes by leading them. They follow his voice. But when they don't follow and they get in jeopardy, it's his rod and his staff that comfort them in the valley of the shadow of death. What does that mean? It means that a sheep, when it's going through the dark places and can't see, needs some stern correction and direction. Our heart needs to be directed or else it's going to lead you to all kinds of terrible places. <laughs> it's why you wake up on Monday morning and go, what was I thinking? Right? Because your heart led you in a place you shouldn't go. It's, 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 it's the time you said, I'm never going to do that again. And you did it again and again and again and again because you went with your heart. It's why you keep seeing, seeming to be on the wrong side of maybe verbal abuse or emotional abuse or whatever because it's like your heart is leading you to the wrong places. So God steps in and says, guard your heart. The second letter um, is the Hebrew word bet. And again, it's a little bit of a pictograph. It's supposed to represent a tent or safety. See, see when you understand this, the, the heart... Um, is it actually supposed to lead you to safety? Your heart, and I'm not talking about your physical heart, I'm talking about your spiritual heart, the core, the center of who you are, was designed by the living God of the universe, not by random chance, to direct you to safety, to direct you to freedom, to direct you to hope and purpose. That's the intent of the heart. But the problem is, is that in our culture, we've weaponized it, right? We've weaponized emotions, let's be honest. If we don't get what we want, we just scream louder. Or we, with, we withdraw affection. We've learned to leverage emotion as a weapon to get what we want. Whether it's aggression or passivity, we play the victim card, we play the bully card, we use our words, we use our fists, whatever it is, we use emotion to guide us, and when it is a weapon, it destroys us and everyone else, but when we understand the way the Bible designed it, it becomes a pathway to freedom. And that's what I want for you today. I want you to be free. I want you to experience everything God has for you. I want you to live fully in who you were designed to be. And so the first thing we see in this letter, Lamed, is that emotions were designed to be teachers. Your emotions are actually a gift. <laughs> I, I know they don't feel like that a lot of times, but they're actually a gift. They're like a, a warning signal on the dashboard of your car telling you, hey, something isn't right here. And this is so important that the proverb says, above all else, make this a high importance, pay attention. 
So can I ask you a couple questions just really quick? Like, what emotion are you struggling with right now? Are you always angry? Are you always anxious? Are you always sad? Are you always fearful? What, what, what emotion are you wrestling with? And have you actually taken just a moment to stop and think, why am I feeling this way? Because we live in a culture, and I'm going to use a trigger word. It's called triggered. We're triggered by everything. But triggered to what? Triggered to what end? And see, here's the thing I've learned about emotion and the way God designed it to work. Anger, when it's directed in a godly direction against injustice, is good. Sorrow, when you're grieving a loss, is good. It helps you process the pain of loss. Anxiety, when it alerts you to a potential danger in the future, is a gift. Even guilt, when it drives you to repent and change and correct, it's a good thing. It only becomes a negative thing when we let our emotions master us and they become the directors and they direct us in paths we should not go. We become bitter, miserable, grumpy, withdrawn, aggressive. So the Bible says, guard that part above all else. Guard your heart. In Psalm 23, or sorry, 139, verse 23, the psalmist says, Search me, God, and know my heart, and test me and know my anxious thoughts. When was the last time you did that? I've been searched very intimately a couple of times in my life. Uh, the first time was a doctor, and uh, I was getting to a certain age. Uh, I have a bit of a family history, and so the doctor thought it'd be best to search me and uh, make sure that you know there was no offensive way in me. And uh, good news, I'm okay. Bad news, I had to go through the search. Awkward, uncomfortable, necessary. The second time was uh, in the airport. Not so, not so great. Not so great. Um, but again, we understand searching in the wrong hands is invasive and destructive, but searching in the hands of someone who's actually trying to help and heal and restore is actually a very good thing. And so you just need to know something about God. He's pursuing you, but he's not pursuing you to beat you down. And he's not pursuing you to fulfill some desire he has for himself. He's actually after you because he wants what's best for you. And that's why the psalmist says, search me, search me, dig into the parts of my heart, help me, help me to understand, because I can't do it on my own. You see, true self-awareness is God-awareness. It's the awareness that, God, I need you to show me what's going on here. When I was growing up, it was like, God, help me know, why am I always angry? What's wrong with me? And God had to remind me there's nothing wrong with you. I've actually put that in you to show you that I am the way that can heal that brokenness. It's why you're responding, you're reacting, you're letting your feelings drive you let, rather than letting them lead you to me. I am your healer. I made you. I know what's best. Search me, oh God, and test me. When I read this, it isn't out of religious obligation. It is a mirror into my heart to heal and restore, just like I want a doctor to poke and probe and say, what's to find out what's wrong. It's this awareness and know my anxious thoughts. You know, I, I don't know what e emotion has you enslaved today. I do know the result of that because I've been on that side of it too. I know that it's ruining your relationships. I know it's keeping you from finding fulfillment and joy in your work. I know it's the misery you feel in those dark, lonely nights when no one's around and you wrestle with yourself. I know that. But I also am here to tell you I know the other side of it. That if you're willing to let God deal with all of those emotional pain, all that emotional stuff and say, God, search me. Know what's going on. Help me understand it. Bill, when you're angry, it's because you see injustice. Just don't direct it at the referee. Direct it at the real injustice in the world. Bill, when you're sad, it's okay because something has been lost, but don't let the loss cripple you. Work towards finding a solution and a resolution and hope. 
when your guilt and shame is beating you down, don't let it do that. Reve let it reveal what you need to deal with so I can heal you. This is the beauty and the power of this passage. Above all else, guard your heart. So a couple of ap applicable questions for you today. Like, whatever you're wrestling with, whatever emotion, whatever's going on in your heart, why are you feeling that? And if you've never stopped long enough to just say, God, show me, please. I encourage you to do that today. And maybe you're not a follower of Jesus yet. That's okay. <laughs> He's always listening, always willing to hear a broken and contrite heart. And then ask the question, am I, how are these emotions impacting those around me? Because you see, not only are your emotions designed to be teachers, your emotions are also designed to protect us. And this is what we call self-regulation. It says guard your heart. That word guard literally means to confine, to restrict. It's a word that can be used in context of a prison um, or a fence or guardrails on a highway. It's the idea that you need to be directed with your feelings and your emotions. You need to let God direct your heart. It's not just going with the flow. It's not just whatever I feel like today. Because that, my friends, is like being in the ocean without an oar, paddle, or sail. You're just pushed around by every wave. It's why the roller coaster of emotion can be so turbulent. And so you need boundaries. And so just like Lamed, the shepherd's staff, was meant to guide and direct. If you're a sheep and you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, it's dark and you're terrified. You're actually... That rod and that staff, they comfort you. Why? Because they keep you on the straight and narrow. They keep you moving in the right direction. And if you know a good shepherd, their only reason they're walking you through that dark valley with potential threats is because there's either greener pasture on the other side or he's bringing you home. In either case, you can trust him that all things work together for good. And it may not look like it right now, and it may not feel like it right now, but when you trust the good shepherd to direct and teach and instruct and set up boundaries, you can trust that it's going to be okay. Just like when you're running a race, you need lines on a track. When you're driving a car, you need rules to conduct yourself so you don't get hurt and other people don't get hurt. This is what God is after. And so when God gives us his rules, it's not because he's a tyrant. Can we just stop and break that narrative right now? Because it's just not true. If he was a tyrant, he wouldn't have come and died so we could be free. If he was a tyrant, he wouldn't have healed the lame, opened blind eyes, and brought the dead back to life. If he was a tyrant, he, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. He is a loving father who wants to guide and direct you back to safety. And I know this because Jesus would often refer to himself as the good shepherd. And when he said, you know, you are my friends, and the shepherd lays down his life for his friends, what was he talking about? He was using a common uh, image in the ancient world. When shepherds would move their livestock, their sheep from place to place at night, maybe they'd be in transit. They wouldn't have a, a secure place, and so they would establish a secure place. They would take like, fallen trees or rocks and they'd build a perimeter and then they'd move their sheep into that safe place. And then when it came time to go to sleep, the shepherd would become the gate. That's why Jesus said, I am the gate. It's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was just expressing the fact that when you trust him, he will set a perimeter around you that protects you, a hedge of protection, we call it. And he will himself will guard and defend against the wolves that will come and destroy and kill you. This is the beauty of the shepherd, our God. He is the door. He is the truth. He is the life. And as long as the sheep stayed inside of that safe space, his love, his truth, they could rest at peace. When I was going through the jungle in Africa, one of my many adventures, it was the middle of the night, about 11 o'clock or close to midnight, pitch black, he couldn't see a thing, no electricity out there. And I heard something and I saw something that was very unsettling. Um, I looked to my right and there were glowing eyes and there was a low roar, a rumble. And I recognized the sound 
because I've seen it at the beginning of every movie with a lion roaring. I knew exactly what that was. And it was honestly looked like about 10 feet away from me and I was terrified. One of the Maasai that I was with, I expressed my concern emotionally. Um, my emotions were leading me that way and not in a good direction, I can tell you that right now. And he said, it's okay, you're with me. Now, that's great. Um, I, I wanted to believe, okay, that that would be good enough. I wasn't overly confident, but, but it did give me an assurance. And here's the point. The point is that when you actually believe the one who makes the promise can deliver, you have absolute peace. If you trust the one who's saying it, you don't even question it. And in this context, God is saying, guard your heart, let me protect it. You say, well, how do I do that? Here, here's some things I, I've just learned really quickly to apply this. You, you have to actually take a few proactive steps. The first is you have to live in the truth. <laughs> it's getting harder and harder in our world to figure out what that is, but we actually have the source. There is no question for us. We have truth. And when you don't have truth, then you're easily led by, like a, like a bull with a ring in its nose, easily led. It could be the mightiest beast, but that, the pain of being pulled by that leads it wherever it wants to go or whoever's driving it. It's the same with us and our emotions. So here's the proactive steps. The first is you've got to dive into truth. Carlene did an amazing job last week uh, talking about filters. And that's one way, you know, whenever someone, sa when someone says something to you or you find yourself in a toxic environment or your emotions are getting the best of you, you can run them through the filter of truth. Is this really true? I have to remind myself of this when that lie, right, that toxic voice, Bill, you're worthless. That's not true. That's not true of you either. Bill, you can't do this. That's not true. Right? We have to run it through a filter, but there's another way you can actually push toxic water out of a cup. If I had a cup full of toxins, I could just keep pouring enough fresh water in until all the water pushed out all the toxins. You see, for us, when we pray and when we read the Bible and when we come to church and when we get into groups, it's not out of religious obligation. It is a way of saturating our life with the truth to push out all the garbage. It's our way of saying, is this really true? And sometimes I need help. I need you and you need me. I need a mirror to reflect and to show me what is real and true. And so guard your heart. Guard your heart. Protect it. Second thing is I've learned that you have to learn from your experiences. You're going to make mistakes. I do too. But like the proverb says, uh, like a dog returning to its vomit, so a fool to his folly when we keep repeating the same patterns over and over and over again and we don't take the time to take stock become aware of what is going on and build environments where we're safe. There's some environments I just can't go into because my heart will get the best of me. My emotions will get the best of me. There are some things I cannot talk about to certain people because I know that my emotions will get the best of me. I put a hedge of protection. I let God guard that part of my life. Sometimes I have to do it proactively. So again, it's a silly example, but it's the best I got for you today. Um, so when I'm going to coach a volleyball game, I have to go in going, you know what, that referee isn't really out to get you, Bill. As a matter of fact, that referee is just trying their very best to do their job, and when they make a bad call, and they will, you just need to proactively prepare yourself with the appropriate response. Good call. Does it work? Not all the time. Uh, but, but it gets better every time. I'm learning from my experiences or even in my relationships with my spouse and my kids, there are things I just know. Don't go there. Don't say that. I've learned. Because it's in a teacher that leads you to safety. But it also takes action. Here's maybe the most challenging application for me on this. Not only does God want to create safe spaces for you, but he also wants you to become a safe space for others. You see, when we're out of control with our emotions, we're unpredictable, we're not safe. When people are afraid to talk about certain things to us, when people walk on eggshells around us, 
when, when people feel like they can't really be honest with you. So don't be mad when you say, how are you doing? And they don't tell you anything. Maybe, maybe it's because you're not safe. And maybe you're like, well, how do you know? Okay, well, let me, let me rephrase the question. If I were to ask your kids, are you safe? What would they say? This for me was one of the most devastating moments of my life. And yet one of the most transformational, the moment I realized that there was a moment when my daughter didn't think she was safe. It crushed me. Because I was angry, you know? Unrighteously angry, I'll be honest. And God got a hold of me and I said, I'm just not going to let that happen anymore. It, it can't. I was called to be a protector. I was called to be someone who lifts people up. I was called to be a safe place that people could talk without judgment or criticism. Yes, I will tell them the truth because I love them, even if they don't want to hear it. But I've got to be a place where people can say, I know Bill loves me, and he's got my back, and I know that he wants what's best for me. So even if he says something that is hard to hear, I will receive it. Or when bad, Bill is having a bad day, they know me enough to know, oh, he's just having a bad day. That's what we're after. So do your kids feel safe with you? Does your partner feel safe with you? Do your friends feel safe, totally safe? How about those who don't know Jesus? You see, this is maybe the most difficult part of this for me is that we as followers of Christ are supposed to be the safest space spaces on planet Earth. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. He is healing us and restoring us. We are not perfect. We don't have it all together, but we are working to God's transformative work in us and through us. So your heart is meant to be a learner, but it's also meant to be to lead people to safety. And finally, the only safety really is Jesus Christ. See, emotions are created by God to lead us back to him. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything flows out of that. Like I've already said, you can't really trust your feelings because they'll take you to places you don't want to go. They'll take you down dark, dead ends. They will lead you into traps. They will. And if you aren't willing to let God filter that and build boundaries, a safe place, you will be bound to repeat history over and over and over again. Jeremiah says it this way, the heart is deceitful. <laughs> it's kind of hard, harsh, Jeremiah, but it's true. We can't trust our own heart and you say, oh, that's hard to say. No, you know it's true. I'm just stating a fact. So what we need is heart surgery. What we need is a new heart. In Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27, the prophet Ezekiel, speaking on behalf of God, says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I'll remove from you your heart, your heart of stone. And maybe you're here today and your heart has become stone. Maybe you're trying to numb the pain. Maybe you're trying to escape the pain. Maybe you're trying to fix the pain. You're like a rock smashing everything in your way. Or you're like a rock unable to receive tenderness, a love and affection. When you get to that place, don't give up. Don't give up. Because God promises if you let him, he will give you a heart of flesh. He'll give you a new heart. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees if you carefully keep all of my laws. And so the, the last question I have for you is this. Is your heart really directed? Where is your heart taking you today? And so in Proverbs, when we read, above all else, guard your heart for everything flows from it. It's an invitation for you and I to stop and think about the emotions we're wrestling through. What are they telling us? What do we need to address? What can we no longer ignore? For your heart was meant to be a teacher. Second, your heart 
is meant to lead you to safety. Do you feel safe? Do you feel seen and understood? And do others feel the same around you? And finally, and most powerfully, if the answer to the first two are no, then could I encourage you to come back to the one who made you, your creator, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, to in all your ways acknowledge him, for he will make your paths straight. There is so much hope for us today. You don't have to be a victim anymore. You don't have to be a bully anymore. You don't have to be unsafe. You, you can be seen. And when people say, how are you doing in a safe space, you'll be able to say, God is working on me. Not only will we experience safety, but we'll become a safe space for others. And that's where there is transformation. So three closing thoughts that maybe today you're not ready to hear. I get it. It's okay. But I hope that today it's like a seed that just finds its place somewhere in your heart so that when it gets really hard, and it will, and when, when you're stuck in a situation you don't want to be in, you will. When your emotions and your will have led you to a place you don't want to be in, that will happen, that this will spring back to life. And at least you'll know where to turn. And these three questions are, are you listening to your heart? Are you? Maybe you need someone to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to ask the person you came, you came with, do you think I'm listening to my heart? I don't know. Maybe you need to have this conversation with your spouse, your partner, your kids today. The second question is, are you safe? Is your heart a safe place to yourself and to others? See, because the world outside is not safe. And I don't think it will ever be totally safe. I think we will always have storms and tyrants. I think we will always face opposition and challenges, we'll always have heartbreak, but we can find a peace on the inside, a safe haven in the presence of our creator. And then we can be that to others. And the final question I have for you is, are you experiencing or is surrendered to God's best for your life? Where is your heart taking you? And so as we close, if you don't like where your heart is taking you today, maybe today you are ready to acknowledge something's broken. We have this great word, it's called repentance. It just means to turn around. It's, it just means to go, I don't, I don't wanna live like this anymore. And that's okay to be there because that's the, the turn. So maybe today you're like, I don't, I, I need to, to do, deal with this, we're here for you. I want you to know if you're watching online, you can interact with our online pastor. You can also meet one of our pastors. They'll be up here at the front to pray with you or they'll be in the back. They have a lanyard. You'll know that they're safe, <laughs> the ones with the lanyards. But today, maybe you're ready to make that step and repent. Or maybe today, you recognize that you've let your emotions master you. Maybe there's a bit of conviction. That's, that's a good thing too. That's a good emotion. I want it challenges you to be who you should be and could be. Maybe today you just need prayer around that as well. And you're just like, I just, I know, I know God is good and I've just let this in and I need, I need his truth to push it out of me. I need to fill that toxin in my life with his presence. Or maybe finally you realize, I don't think I am safe. And I've been called to be a protector and so well, I need God's help today to change some things deep inside of me. I need him to give me a heart of flesh because right now I have a heart of stone. If you're in any of those categories, I'm just gonna pray a prayer. And it's gonna be my prayer. I'm, I'm gonna invite you to a very intimate, personal prayer that I'm just gonna pray for me. And if you'd like, in your own way, you can pray. You can pray out loud, you can pray quietly, or you can just listen and resonate with what's being said, but... I just want you to win. And I know the only way that you'll win is if you let God change your heart back to who you were created to be. And so let's pray, Father. I stand in this place uh, pretty vulnerable, and that's okay, because I trust you. And I trust this amazing group of people that, that have come into this place and are listening to this right now. 
So God, please forgive me. Forgive me for not always being who I should be. Forgive me for using my emotions as a weapon when really it was, they were designed by you to be a path to my freedom. Forgive me, God, for allowing the outside world to, to press in and take precedence. And so today I'm just asking that I put above all else, I want you to guard my heart. I pray that your truth would be revealed to me, that you'd remind me I belong to you, that today I can be forgiven and restored and healed, that tomorrow can be better than today because you're there waiting for me. If I'll just let you do your work today. So I ask God that you'd heal me, heal my broken heart. I pray with my emotions, God, you would direct them so that I find you again. And then I would help other people find you. I just want to be safe. I want to be whole. So I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here today and you need um, prayer for anything, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, we're here for you. And I want to just encourage you with one thing, just one action step, besides taking the questions and talking about them on your way home, um, or whatever you're going to do with these questions, maybe in your own personal reflection. I want to encourage you to join a group, because, you know, it is scary, and it is hard to trust people when you've been hurt, but it's the only way to find healing. And so if you're not in a group, I you're not experiencing the fullness of what we are as a church family. And so on your way out today, you're gonna to see all kinds of people with group stickers and just talk to someone and just ask. See if there's a way that you can get connected because we want a place that's safe for you. And so before I bless you, I just wanna finish with one story. Bear with me and I'm just throwing this in the last second. I just feel like I'm supposed to share it and I know you're gonna groan and it's okay. It's okay. But one of my greatest joys in life is when my grandson runs with arms open wide to me because he knows I'm safe. We can be in a room crowded with strangers and he's a shy kid. If you've ever seen him with me, he buries his head in my shoulder, but when he sees me, He's uninhibited, and I love it. And I tell you that story for two reasons. One, because God is waiting for you to run to him uninhibited. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to crush you. He's going to elevate you and heal you. Run to him. And second, everywhere you go this week, could you be a safe place for others? This world is messed up. It is broken. It needs people of faith to say, I don't have it all together. I'm not perfect. I'm not telling you what to think or do, but I'm just a safe place for you to find your healing. Not what I want for you, not what I think you should do, but what God has for you. Could we be those kind of people? Because if we were, I believe it would change the world. And I want to change the world with you. And so I bless you with the truth from Scripture. Above all else, please guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.